Hello everyone, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today, I'm going to do something different. It is Monday night, the night before Mardi Gras, and I figured I'd do something Mardi Gras themed. However, it's not going to be the classic Mardi Gras that we know and love. It's going to be a tribute to a uh, artist named Tom Sechrist. That's S-E-C-R-E-S-T. T. He was a professor at UL, and I had seen his art up all over Lafayette whenever I was there, and I'd go to the art walks, things like that. And being a college student, in hindsight, I never bought any artwork, and I am always just kick myself to this day for not getting anything from him, because I his art was so unique, so inspirational, and it affected some of the sketching and doodling that I had done. I didn't have him as a professor, um, but like I said, he was very like prominent. And his art was very kind of dark, um, very emotionless faces and self-portraits. Um, weird parades. I remember seeing a, a print, I guess it was an etching or something that he had done, where it was looking down at a view and it just was all in perspective and perfect. He was just so talented. Apparently as a professor, he would sit there and draw the whole time, but that's just apparently who this guy was. The ACA, which was a, a local museum in Lafayette, had an exhibit um, probably in 2010 or 11, near the end of my alt cert program at UL. And just one wall was, uh, and th these are big museum walls, like huge, just, uh, painting, drawing, etc. after one after another of just self portraits. And then there were just piles upon piles of sketchbooks. So it was just really amazing. If you look him up online, you'll see maybe a few examples of his work. Uh, I don't think it's really had gotten out there. Uh, but I believe he's deceased. I mean, I'm looking up online now to see if I could find the date or anything like that, but there, there's not really much information, which is a shame. Anyway, so he, I think, had just worked a lot of the mediums that I remember him seeing, seeing was ink, um, I think Conte, chalk, uh, watercolor. Um, I remember one of my friends who had grown up around him saying that he, when he would drink his wine, he would dip his brush right into his wine. It was just very all over the place. Okay, so without further ado, I think I'm going to do a dark Mardi Gras themed um, piece of art. I have a piece of Stonehenge Aqua, quarter sheet. I don't know how long this is going to take. Um, I'm taking out a Noodler's Boston safety pen. This is a pen that you can leave ink in for a long time because it stores the nib within it. But if you're new to fountain pens, it's something you have to be careful with because if you open it and turn it over, you, you pour the ink everywhere. Um, I also have a gold nib on this one because of the potential for it to rust, I believe. So that being said, in here I have the platinum carbon ink and I'm just going to use it to sketch. And we'll just let the scene happen. I think even though this is a tribute to Tom Sechrist and Mardi Gras. I'm gonna make it Andrew Broussard oriented, much like he had his self-portraits. And we'll draw a sketchy from memory self-portrait of how I look.
and I'm just gonna let it skip and have fun. I haven't done this in a really long time. I remember when we were taking uh, drawing classes at UL, I think it was Professor, was it Allen? He had us go see another exhibit. There was a museum on campus and that there was, um, there was I think it was a photography exhibit. It was very uh, black and white, very grainy, very in-your-face portraits. And we had to uh, sketch from them. Yeah. So that's Hammy. Hammy's in the art room. Hopefully you can see how the face is starting to take place. And we'll probably switch mediums, uh, watercolor. Um, I have the jelly roll pen, that'll probably make its way onto it. Gouache. I don't have any chalk. I haven't done a portrait sketch in a while. I know this is getting to be a little too long here. <coughs> With portrait work, you can kind of break it in half, top of the head, bottom of the head, and that line. And I think there's the thirds here. And I have a very long beard. That's been scrunchy lately, so I have to go to the barber and get it trimmed. If my mom is watching, which I know she'll wind up watching it, I'm sure she'll comment about that. So, y'all be prepared for a comment about the length of my beard and how it needs to get trimmed. Now, I know this is going to be a dark approach, but the eyes were always very dark in his work, like a vacant stare, or as if the eyes were almost not there. One website does have an artist statement from him about an exhibit. You could probably read up on it. Now, I'm going to move away from the face for a moment. Let's get the kind of nostril area first. Start creating that. Oh, by the way, um, to start throwing other artists in, uh, David LaFell, he does the bright light fine art, and he's a subscription-based website, and I think he's like in his 80s at this point, but he is very concise and has a great approach to portraits. Uh, it's oil painting but it might be something you all would enjoy. The nose is coming out very big here, but it's fine. Let's move to making this very weirdly Mardi Gras-esque. He would have these heads that were parade floats and then the rest have some sort of like marching aspects to it. I have my Kindle on the side to see if I could find anything like it while I'm doing it. Actually, let me pull up this uh, 
little self portrait you can see that he had done. You can see these self portraits with the the vacant look. But unfortunately there's just not much up there. He was just so prolific though. I mean he had painted it, he had done so much. That's Hammy digging around back there. I want to get the feel of parade goers, but I don't want parade goers. It almost borderlines, uh, uh, that one that I'd shown, it almost borderlines like a weird occult aspect. And I don't know if there was anything there behind that or if it was the um you know mardi gras is a religious or yeah a religious type celebration so there must have been that idea there i'm running out of ink i haven't used this guy in so long let me pause for a moment. All right. I just capped it and turned my pen upside down to get some more ink around it. The problem is I'm drawing on cold press paper. And when you saw me wipe my nib earlier, I was pulling off pieces of paper. Ooh, look at that flow that we're getting. In fact, this nib is a vintage flex nib. So it's probably on par with a flexi waterman nib. I'm not sure. I really haven't um, played with my fountain pens too much lately. I do use them for work really done too much art with them. I don't care if we get any smears in it. We can um, roll with the punches. In fact, we might even put out some other ink and do some splattering. still Facebook friends with uh, Nasha. I referenced her earlier. She had grown up around this fella. I'm going to tag her in the picture whenever I post it. She had taken all the art classes with me, at, or a lot of them at UL. And she ended up getting a lot into costume design and does a lot of the, the cosplay and stuff for um, Star Trek and makes costumes for Festival International and other things. She often makes newspaper headlines with all of her, um, her pieces. Very talented. When Festival International was canceled, due to you know, COVID for the past few years. I think she was living, she was living in another state. Yeah, but uh, she had, well, what Festival International is, it's one of the largest free festivals in America. And throughout downtown Lafayette, they set up and have set up all of these stages. Some are permanently set up and some are set up for Festival International. And she wound up doing like kind of a set design around her house 
of each one of those stages and filmed a little festival international celebration. It takes a lot of dedication. Platinum Carbon Ink is a fantastic ink. Um, it works well in fountain pens. I know they always say kind of be careful with the ink that you work with. So make sure you can use one that'll work. Um, Noodler's fountain pens it works great in. Uh, other ones that are coming out of India. I think um, fountain pen revolution pens handle them well for me. The platinum desk pens, they work well with it as well. That's kind of a thinner nib. If I use it on this paper, it would be just be tearing everything up. There's that culture hustle that has come up with a black ink. And it's been advertised lately. I haven't tried it, and I feel bad that I haven't tried it. Because I'm always kind of... You know, saying, oh, you know, I want to try different things. But I just like platinum carbon ink so much. I also put a post up on YouTube since it's the end of the month. And that's when I get, you know, like, Patreon, patron members and support for the channel. I try to take that money and put it back into the channel in art supplies or other materials, you know either new things or things that I just need to restock on. So if there's anything you'd like to see me get, let me know. I'll put up a post about that. There's a few things that have been recommended in previous videos this month. So I'll see what I can get, see what I can afford or what's available from one order. very Tom Seacrestian self-portrait. As a parade float. Like I said, I want the movement of people, but I don't want people. There's a, there's quite a few Lovecraft, HP Lovecraft short stories that are reminiscent of this theme. I wonder if he was inspired by HP Lovecraft at all. I'm going to put this away for a moment. I'm going to grab some Chinese ink and bring out a brush. The H.P. Lovecraft things that I'm referring to, I think one of them was called The Festival. It's where the narrator returns to his area of upbringing or like the ancestral place and there's kind of esoteric festival that starts taking place. This is um, the Chinese Yasutoma ink. You can use the Speedball ink as well. It's just easy for me to grab. I want to kind of get a wash going over this whole thing. Also, within the Cthulhu mythos of H.P. Lovecraft, there are mentions of um, you know, cult happenings outside of New Orleans and other type of vibes. Because when you think about it, New Orleans and Louisiana was a melting pot of different religious 
beliefs. We have, in my area, well, and, and ethic backgrounds, uh, predominantly, I think it was a predominantly um, German and French. And from there, as you go towards New Orleans, there's more um, Creole and Haitian and other vibes. So you have a mixture of a lot of different uh, religions and cultures and people from different areas. Yeah. You know, New Orleans always has that vibe of voodoo. And actually, I'll tell a few stories while I do this. My mom's going to laugh at this one. But I have a scar on my uh, lip. So I have a big beard. And right here... I have a scar on my lip, and I call it my voodoo scar. When I was a child down here, so I grew up down in um, Louisiana, but grew up in New York. So, born down here, grew up in New York. We lived in a trailer, and I had fallen down the steps of the trailer as a little, little baby. Okay. My mom's going to say, oh my god, everybody's going to think that I'm a terrible mom now. So, just... You'll make a comment, just say, no, you're a great mom. So she feels <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anywho, so she freaked out, ran in the house, and put me on the counter, which, telling the story now, I did not fall off the counter, don't worry. And she went in the other room to get the phone to call an ambulance or whatever. And by the time she got back with the phone, her friend had stopped the bleeding, like stopped whatever it was. And I think maybe she had put sugar on it or something, but I have a scar to this day on my lip. And I refer to it as my voodoo scar because my mom said that she had done something. And down here we have these things called uh, tritours. Hopefully that's the correct pronunciation. Where, and this is how it, how it goes with these things, and it's and it sounds really weird. Um, and I don't know if she was technically one of them or if a tritur is can only be male. I'll have to ask my friends. But a tritur, you is it like I guess a treater in the Catholic faith or Christian faith, the Cajun Christian faith. And if you had like a wart or something, they you would call them up or they would do something or they would say something or touch it or rub it or whatever. And then from there, it would heal. Uh, supposedly so I don't know but you know there there's that weird voodoo um, vibes to those type of things that's a lot of rambling and I apologize I'm using the paper towel to lift back. Uh, we'll probably lighten up in the drying stage, but I, I want a lot of that pen detail to show through. I want to play around on top of it.
And I don't want it to be just boring, just flat black. around with this background. All right, just flattening my paper out. I'm gonna pause for a dry off and we'll uh, see what we have going on. I think we're dry enough. Um, you can see we had that tonal shift where things softened as it went. Now we could really kind of play around some more. Let's see. So we'll see how the jelly roll goes over this. Yeah. And I actually have, I mentioned how I didn't have any chalk, but I do. Somebody had given me these slate pencils. I think they're pencils mint to draw on slate, so it would be a charcoal, or not charcoal, uh, chalk. Gives a little bit of effect. We'll use it to add to the atmosphere ambiance. It's subtle. go back and forth but I want to expand the scene you can see how haphazard my mark making is which is very fun and liberating I'm letting it dance around it in fact you could probably have it up on an easel and stand from a distance and use it like a wand I was talking to uh, Joe Menza about that the other day how Whenever we were taking drawing classes, or whenever I was, we would hold the pencil up at the end. Same thing with the brush. To put some distance between yourself and the canvas. And also, are we going to get it to flow? Is it giving issues? And also so you're not like hunched into the painting or the drawing and you're not um, engrossed. It's very easy to get caught up in minor details and not see the bigger picture. This pen just might not pass good over the pre-existing. Okay. Right, let's add one thing that was predominant in a lot of self portraits. You'd wear this top hat. So we're going to add a top hat in it as one of our parade floats. And we can make him a character within it. The other day I was playing around with some um, some pencils. I think one of them was like an ebony pen. It must have had some oil in it because it wasn't erasing that well. Did he give himself a monocle? just its counts of these sketches. I mentioned earlier my regret of never 
purchasing a piece of his art. And I mentioned on campus, they had a library. And the library had some prints of his work, uh, a museum had some prints of his work splattered. That's fine. That'll add to the whole feel. I should have picked that up. And I remember I went to a gallery. I think it was a gallery like 514. It was named after the address. And I had uh, inquired about some of his artwork. And they pulled out a big old folder of works. But then again, a, co um, a college student, I just couldn't really, you know, purchase art. I was always you know, moving around, things like that. Um, in fact, there was one piece that was on the wall near the window of his. I think it was a woman I think the woman was um, was naked, but it was just such a great piece of work. I don't think that studio's in existence anymore. Not fast. I just don't go to Lafayette that often. Um, like right now it's Mardi Gras and in Lafayette they put up the parade barriers for like two or three weeks and it's just an absolute disaster driving around Lafayette or downtown Lafayette. That being said I really need to start doing all that again. I think we'd have notes of light red oxide which would probably be from the Conte, kind of that sanguine type feel. We'll move away from this for a moment. I hope you're all enjoying this. I know it's definitely out of character and different for the channel. But Despite the kind of haunting feel of it, it's very liberating. I think I might have Conte crayon somewhere. Let me pause for a moment. So I have this um, Creed of Color, which we can play around with. I also have a Jelly Roll, which this one must be brown. Yeah, okay, that looks good against it. The Jelly Roll has a black Jelly Roll pen. I must have one of those around as well. I shy away from the graphite, the chalk, the um, all those things, pastels, because it just gets everywhere. Like I've mentioned that I, you know, I rent a small two-bedroom house, and I have the one room dedicated to art, and. I just wouldn't be able to keep it clean if I had done uh, charcoal in here. Charcoal is very liberating, very back and forth, additive and subtractive. It's great. But for me, it's just not um, feasible. We had a professor who would wear all black. Not to be all, ooh, I'm wearing all black. He would wear all black because of um, 
the graphite and the charcoal all over the place. I'm gonna try using this little bamboo pen. This will give us a little bit of variation of mark making. Um, Alan Owen and probably I think Edward Wesson because Alan Owen I think had referenced him and Lois Davidson would make their own mark making tools out of sticks and other pieces. Um, there's somebody on the channel that leaves comments. Uh, I don't know the, the pronunciation. It's like, it's Meg, Mega. I believe Mega makes their own brushes, which is very cool. Whenever I moved down to Louisiana and started the alt cert and I started taking the art classes, there's definitely a more contemporary approach in a lot of the classes compared to what I was seeing up in New York. It's a more modern approach. And it kind of really threw me off my game. I've mentioned that in the past. During the time period, it had thrown me off to get my game. So I had the house that I was renting had cam Camilla flowers, chamomile flowers. It had uh, flowers out front, and I harvested the flowers and boiled them down and made an ink out of them. And I was looking at all those type of things, but it was moving me too far away from actually doing art and learning. So, take that for what you will. I wonder if I have white. Yeah, I do. Oh, I have something precariously leaning against it. I have some white India ink. From Dr. P.H. Martins. And I have um, the cyanotype glass <laughs> leaning against the bottle, so I'm being very careful. This will be a great time for us to play with this. And we'll just dip right in. Or, let's just see how that works. These guys are easy to find, easy to pick up at art stores. Just dump sink, apparently. So we've used the jelly roll. We've used some chalk. We're using just white ink, white India ink. We'll stay away from gouache at this point. There's no need. How I'm going to wash this, anybody's guess. Though, Dipping directly into that might be easier if I dip directly into a bottle of black ink from Dr. P.H. Martins. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> I feel like it's going to go everywhere. Yep. But we're experimenting, 
tribute to Tom Seacrest, amazing artist. I'm getting ready for Mardi Gras. Let me pause this. We'll do a dry off. Okay, so I have this puddle that I just don't want to battle with. So I'll let it be. Um, we're 40 minutes into this. I apologize for going so long. I hope you're enjoying and that I've kept your attention. If not, that's totally fine. I understand. Though, you probably wouldn't hear me say that because you wouldn't be here watching it, right? Let's put out some Chinese ink. This bottle just goes forever. It's probably like 10, 12 bucks. We can grab, ooh, let's see. We'll grab the script, Dag dagger brush. And this is what we'll use to get our esoteric parade goers. And this is a great opportunity to add depth and rhythm by playing with the spacing. between them. And like I said, the goal is to make it feel like people without actually putting people. So I'm just thinking a hat. An arm coming down next to a child. Maybe the youngest child right there. Coming up on the other side. Okay, let's do shadow and ground these. And add more, another layer, people closer to us. That's a little too center of the. balloon type stuff that people are holding up in the air. This is definitely a weird one. I hope you're enjoying it. If you partake in any Mardi Gras celebration, please obviously do so safely.
I guess here I'll dry it off and sign it and see how it looks. Let me pause the camera. Well, that was quite a bit of fun. Um, it reminds me of whenever I was exploring watercolor in the style of the late Betsinski. And it's always fun switching things up and experimenting in different fashions. These jelly rolls just work so great over watercolor and ink. I think I'll sign it in jelly roll. I hope you enjoyed. And of course you're always welcome to follow along with anything I do. This is probably a weird one to follow along with, but if you want to try the style and just this looseness, go ahead. I would love to see your results. Or if you're familiar with any other artists that do things in this fashion, I would love to hear about it. If you want to support this channel, I have the YouTube membership you can actually sign up for now. And you can also check out the Patreon. I have some exclusive content. I try to do the time lapses or early access. But simply liking, subscribing, and commenting and giving me ideas and letting me know what you want to see really helps out a lot. So I hope you enjoyed. I'm just still kind of going to town with it. Did I put away that pencil? Oh, there it is. See, we can just do that little ambient effect. I'm not sure it shows up much over the camera. But there you go. And just remember, um, one of the main part of art is to have fun. Um, and just explore. Y'all have a great day. Have a safe Mardi Gras.